Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to a new video. Uh, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Today I have the second mock draft that I've made. Um, the first one was made after the combine. The second one's going to be made after free agency. Uh, I feel like that makes sense. There's still some free agents that need to be moved. But I think in the way of like draft pick trading around, we're probably done. I would like to think. I don't know. It's been a crazy offseason. Who knows? Um, I'm about 40 players into this draft, like scouting wise right now, most of the first round draft picks. So I feel like I have a pretty good understanding. I'm going to be doing this half based off what I think of players and half based off what I think teams are going to do. Uh, that being said, with the first pick, I have Aiden Hutchinson going to the Jaguars. He's player number two on my board, but he's one of two players that I think have little to no weaknesses in this class. Um, that being said, the second pick is Kayvon Thibodeau. I think these two are neck and neck, players one and two. I have Kayvon Thibodeau, player one, just a little bit. Um, I think his weaknesses, as slight as they are, I think they're a little bit less than Aiden Hutchinson. But I think these two are definitely players one and two. Um, and I don't, a lot of people have Kayvon sliding. I just don't think that he should. These two are phenomenal in almost all respects of their game. I have the Texans going Kyle Hamilton at three. Safeties don't usually go in the top ten. Uh, Kyle Hamilton might be the set best safety prospect that I've seen in my life, though. Um, a lot of people have him as the best player in this entire class, and I can definitely see a case for it. You can argue these top three if you want to. I don't think he's top one. I think he's definitely third or even a little lower down. There's some guys that I'm very high on, but I definitely could see the Texans taking him here, and I think that they should. I definitely think he's the best player available that can make an immediate input impact for them. Uh, moving on to the Jets. I have the Jets taking Evan Neal. From my scouting, I like Evan Neal a lot more than Ekem. Um, the big thing with Ekem is that he, he's more flexible. He can play guard. He can play tackle, uh, which is great. But Evan Neal is just all around better than Ekem, in my opinion, from what I've seen uh, from the tape that I've witnessed. I definitely think Evan Neal should be the pick here. Um, I still think the Giants take Ekem. I still think these top five are the top five off the board regardless. Um, I don't think anything could really change that unless like a quarterback sneaks in or something stupid. Um, I think it should definitely be these five. And right now I'm leaning towards this order. And this is after I've watched tape on them. So it's probably going to stick this way. Uh, and then I have the Panthers taking Kenny Pickett as the first quarterback off the board. It wouldn't surprise me to see Malik Willis be the first quarterback off the board here. But I just think that... I think that Kenny Pickett has a very slight edge over Malik Willis overall in the way of talent. Uh, teams seem to like Malik Ellis or Malik Willis in a uh, personality perspective, like a poise perspective. People seem to be a lot higher on Malik Willis than Kenny Pickett, but who really knows? Um, let's see. At number seven, the first player on this that I actually have yet to scout. Um, I have the Giants taking Trayvon Walker. Trayvon Walker has been flying up boards. Um, from the little that I have seen, Trayvon Walker is amazing. I don't know why I haven't quite gotten around to scouting him yet. Couldn't tell you. Uh, speaking of edge rushers, uh, David Ajabo right there, number 23, uh, on the board for them. Phenomenal athlete. He'll probably fall to a late day two pick because he blew out his Achilles at his pro day. One of the most tragic things that I've heard of. David Ajabo is one of my favorite players in this class, too. It's an actual tragedy. Um, but Trayvon Walker is one hell of an athlete, top to bottom, from what I have seen. I haven't done, like, in-depth studies on him, but, like, his highlights are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, great size for the position, great quickness. Um, I definitely think the Giants could look to go edge rusher here, too. At 8, if you're the Falcons, what do you do? I don't think they're looking to take a quarterback. I think they're okay with Marcus Mariota. They seem to think he's their dude. Um... Which leaves edge rusher a wide receiver. I wouldn't be surprised to see this be like Jermaine Johnson. But I think their need at wide receiver and surrounding Marcus Mariota with weapons is a lot bigger. And I love Drake London. He's one of my favorite players in this class. Drake London is six foot six, uh, jumps unbelievably well, has unbelievable hands, and ran like a 4 or 5 40. He is ridiculous in terms of just pure athleticism. And there's he does all the fire. He's a little bit like... He's not perfect at running routes, um, but he, I think everything in his game is going to translate, and I definitely think he's wide receiver one in this class, in my opinion. If you're sitting at number nine and you're the Seahawks, what do you do? I've been jumping between them picking a quarterback or not picking a quarterback. 
But I think if the Seahawks are in a position to take quarterback two in this class, I think they go ahead and do it. I mean, you can take a tackle here, I think. I mean, I'm very high on, uh, where is he? Charles Cross. I'm very high on Charles Cross. I like him a lot. You could see a guy like Jermaine Johnson come off the board for sure. But I think if they have the chance to take Malik Willis with his amazing upside, I think they do it. If you're sitting at number 10 and you're the Jets, uh, I mean, you could go basically anywhere, but your biggest position of need really, other than tackle, is edge rusher. And Jermaine Johnson is one hell of an edge rusher uh, out of Florida State. I have him pretty high on my board. I couldn't tell you exactly. I haven't looked at it in a second, but I like Jermaine Johnson a lot. He's probably sixth on my board, I think. He is a phenomenal athlete. He has great size and great quickness. So, amazing get-off, too. He's one hell of an athlete. Um, I think if you're Washington here, you have to look to go wide receiver. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go with somebody like Sauce Gardner, who's still on the board. All the corners are still on the board at this point, mind you. But I think they really do need wide receiver. They've been hinting at looking for it, and I think Jameson Williams. There's some amazing wide receivers in this class. And Jameson Williams might be the best wide receiver in the entirety of the class. You can make a case for him over Drake London. I think the consensus actually is that Jameson Williams is better. Uh, he's one hell of an athlete. Um, I don't. I could see a situation where he's taken before anybody, or before Drake London. Um, and I definitely think that Washington's in a prime spot to take a wide receiver. Uh, if you're the Vikings, I think... I mean, you could take a safety here. I don't think you get much out of doing so. I don't think you get much out of taking an interior D lineman either. They could go wide receiver. Wouldn't be shocked. They could even go linebacker, I think. One of my favorite players in this entire class, if not my favorite player, is Devin Lloyd out of Utah. But I just don't know if how the board, how the board is shaking out if that's the pick that they choose to go with. Um, I think they go corner, especially if all of them are on the board. And Ahmed Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati is an absolute freak. He is unbelievable. He really is. He's one of my favorite players in this entire class. He's one freak of an athlete. Uh, if you're the Texans sitting at 13, I think I mean I think I think this is a place where you could go back to back corner. Um, I could see maybe maybe George Karloftis coming off the board here, but I think if you're the Texans, you have so many needs, right? That you can, you can probably afford to draft best player available. And I think that's going to be Derek Stingley. Derek Stingley's upside is unbelievable. Uh, I know earlier in the year a lot of people had him going top five. Uh, he didn't do great at the combine, so he's fallen a little bit. Um, but the upside on Derek Stingley is absolutely unbelievable. So Now, if you're the Ravens sitting here, again, I don't think you're in a prime spot to take an interior lineman. Uh, you could take an edge rusher. Again, George Karloftis is amazing. Um, but I honestly think that we could see a scenario where back-to-back-to-back -back -back corners come off the board. And I have them taking Andrew Booth out of Clemson. Uh, the Ravens definitely need corner help. It might not be their biggest need, but Andrew Booth is probably the best player on the board at this spot, honestly. Especially from like a potential side. Um and I definitely think we could see all three corners go pretty close to each other. They're all pretty close in talent. I think Ahmed Gardner is above the rest of them by quite a bit. Uh, but past him, those other, Stingley and Booth are so close. Unbelievably close. Um, they're both phenomenal athletes, honestly. Any team would be lucky to have them. And at 14, Andrew Booth could potentially be a huge steal. If you're at 15, I think you're probably pretty upset that that was the pick that came off the board. Um, you know, obviously, I don't think Trent McDuffie's in play at 15. Again, George Karloftis could go a lot sooner than this. A lot of these guys could look to go edge rusher. And I like George Karloftis a lot. Um, but I think that this is an interior alignment. One of my favorite players in the class is Kenyon Green. Right now in my scouting, Ken Kenyon Green's top five. I think he is phenomenal. He honestly doesn't really have weaknesses. His strength is blocking. Like He can run block, he can pass block. He's quick off of his, out of his stance. He is really good. The one thing about Kenyon Green is he doesn't pick up blitzes really well, which is a trend with a lot of linemen coming out of college. They're not amazing at blitz pickup. They can get kind of confused when a blitz comes. But that's really about it with Kenyon Green. He is phenomenal. Uh, now, the good thing at 16, I mean, the Eagles pick three times in five picks. The big thing here is 
what can you pick to steal from the Chargers and Saints? What do you think that they're going to do? And I think, especially the Saints, they could be looking to take a wide receiver. And I think the Eagles could definitely use a wide receiver. So in that respect, I definitely think that this is a wide receiver that comes off the board. Um, it could be a lot of these guys. I think Jahan Dotson's in play, Garrett Wilson, Traylon Burks. All these guys are pretty close. Even Chris Olave, he's kind of a boomer bust kind of guy. But I think Garrett Wilson, Jahan Dotson, I think, and Traylon Burks both are a little bit better than Garrett Wilson. But Garrett Wilson is just more athletic than the two of them. Um, and I think they're going to look to take an athletic kind of guy here. Again, all three of them very close in talent, uh, which means you're at 17. This is where I think Charles Cross comes off the board. I don't really know who else would be in play. I mean, you could go linebacker here. Again, I thought about it for a while. Devin Lloyd is one of my favorite players in the class, easily top 10. But he's, again, just with the board shaking out, I just don't think anybody's going to look to take a linebacker. I could see him going a lot sooner. I hope he does. I like him a lot. Any team will be lucky to have him. But... The same can be said about Charles Cross. He is very underrated in this class. He is definitely worth a top 10 pick, I think. He is great. Uh, honestly, I think in my board, I might actually have him above the other two tackles in this class that have already been taken. I'm pretty sure he's definitely above Ikim on mine. Uh, I'm very high on Charles Cross. I think he's a great player. Um, the Saints here, I fought with them taking a quarterback here. They just re-signed Jameis Winston. It's hard for me to imagine a scenario where they do go quarterback, especially with the other holes that they have, and especially with these great wide receivers in this class. I think they go Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. It's what makes the most sense for me. Again, Johan Dotson, you can make a case for him easily. You can make a case for Chris Olave. You could even make a case that they do go quarterback, or even that we do see uh a linebacker come off the board here with Devin Lloyd or even Nicobe Dean in this place. Nicobe Dean's also great. But I think Traylon Burks is what makes the most sense. Now the Eagles here, I mean, I don't think this is a Trent McDuffie kind of play. It could be. Wouldn't be surprised. You can't really take a safety here. I think this is where we finally see George Karloftis come off the board. I'm huge on George Karloftis. I like him a lot. I think he is a great player. I think he's definitely worth a pick a little bit sooner than this. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go in the top 15. I like him a lot, the leader of Purdue's defense. Um, if you're the Steelers at 20, I don't think they're looking for a quarterback. I really don't. They just got Mitch for a little bit. He can be a bridge. Um, I think if their needs weren't playing out like they were, they would think about it. But one of my favorite players in the class is still around here, and it's their biggest need, in my opinion. I'm going to have them take Tyler Linderbaum out of Iowa. Tyler Linderbaum is another guy that's a top 10 guy for me. I love Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, him and Kenyon Green are both phenomenal. Um, I definitely think Kenyon Green is better, but Tyler Linderbaum's not far behind him. He is really good. He's de I think he's another top 10 guy. He is amazing. Very, very slept on. Uh, another guy that... he. I mean, he's a little bit slower out of his stance, but he is a phenomenal blocker. Run, pass, whatever you need, really. I think he's going to be phenomenal and phenomenal at the next level. If he wasn't around, I think the Steelers might look to take a quarterback, seeing as the rest of their needs don't really play out too well at this spot. But I think at 20, if you can grab Tyler Linderbaum, you do that. Which I think, at 21, the Patriots are probably in for the steal of the draft so far, with Devin Lloyd still being on the board. I think Devin Lloyd's top five on my board. I really do. Devin Lloyd is amazing. He is one of the best, he might be the best linebacker prospect I've ever seen. He is really, really good. Uh, which leaves the Packers. Now, I've kind of fought myself with this one. I don't think they're in the best spot to take an edge rusher or a tackle, really. Um, and I think a wide receiver is what makes sense to me. But even then, I don't know which wide receiver. It's obviously, to me, it's obviously either Chris Olave or Jahan Dotson. Chris Olave has a much higher ceiling than a lot of these wide receivers but a much lower floor. He's a boomer bust kind of guy. You don't really know what you're going to get out of Chris Olave. He tested pretty poorly, other than his 40. His 40 was nice, but who really knows? Uh, I do have him being taken here over Jahan Dotson, even though I do think Jahan Dotson is better. I'm just trying to think about what NFL teams will do and not what I would do specifically. And I think Chris Olave is the guy for the Packers here. Sitting at 23, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there are 
this is a place where I could see a Beaky coming off the board here out of Penn State. I know I butchered that name. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Um, this is another place also that I could see a guy like Jahan Dotson coming off the board. Uh, but for me personally, I think that this is where we do see Trent McDuffie come off the board out of Washington. Uh, Trent McDuffie's good. I mean, he's worth a first-round grade, but not by that much. I just think the Cardinals need corner so badly that they can grab him here. It's probably about where he's supposed to be drafted. I'm not super high on Trent McDuffie. Great size at corner, though, 6'1". Um, so that does help him a lot. Um, but I, I think definitely the Cardinals should. You could argue Kalir Elam here, but I think they need a cornerback, and I, I think Trent McDuffie's easily the best one on the board. Uh, now, sitting here with the Cowboys... They could look to take a Beaky off the board at edge. I could even see this being Jordan Davis, honestly. If a team thinks that they can move him to edge, he's going to go a lot sooner than this. But personally, I think that this is Daxton Hill, the safety. Daxton Hill is one hell of an athlete. He really is. He's been climbing up boards recently, and I think he deserves it. Daxton Hill is really good. Um, and I think the Cowboys definitely have a need there. I know they just brought back their safety on a short-term deal, but I don't think that really changes anything. I could also see this being Nicobe Dean at linebacker for the Cowboys. Uh, Nicole Gadeen is great. Um, but I think they need safety too much to pass it up. I know that uh, they just brought back Leighton Van Der Esch on a short-term deal, but yeah, I think Dax Nihil's the pick here. If you're the Bills, this is where I think Jordan Davis comes off the board. I'm not huge on Jordan Davis, actually. Not at all. Um, I think he's going to go in the first round, but I think he's definitely overrated as a prospect due to his size. After watching tape on Jordan Davis, he's not... He's not overly talented. I mean, he's good. He's amazing. But the way that he tested at the Combine doesn't really show on tape to say that. Um, he's another guy. He has a very, very high ceiling. Uh, but I, I don't really know what... Nobody really knows exactly what to expect out of Jordan Davis. I think that there's better interior D linemen in this class. Like, I liked Marvin Leal a lot. Uh, Perry and Winfrey's nice. Um, there's definitely some really good edge rushers still on the board, but I think that this is probably about where we'll see him go, and the Bills definitely do need him. Um, if you're the Titans... Now, even though I do think that they could take a wide receiver here, and Jahan Dotson is on the board, I just don't think they can pass up a linebacker, seeing as they need one. And N'Kobe Dean is phenomenal at what he does. Uh, N'Kobe Dean's a top 15 guy for me. I like him a lot. I just don't really know how much linebackers are going to be needed in this class. Nobody seems to have like a massive, massive need at linebacker this year. Um, but I think at 26, N'Kobe Dean is an absolute steal. Uh, moving on to 27. Uh, I mean, if you have the Buccaneers, you can basically do whatever, I think. Um, I definitely have them going wide receiver here. There's no corner that's really worth it right now. Kalir Elam is definitely worth a first-round grade, but he's really the only one. Uh, Tariq Wool Wool Wooten is one of the... Is it Wooten or Wooten? I don't know. I'm actually blind, if you'd believe that. Uh, but he tested really well at the Combine. But I don't think either of these guys are in play here. I could potentially see this being a Kenneth Walker kind of place or an Isaiah Spiller. Uh, but I don't think either of those guys are going to be going in day one. I think that this is where we see Jahan Dotson go. He's the last of the super elite wide receivers, in my opinion. Uh, in the way of just prospects. Uh, it's like that one five block of wide receivers is phenomenal, and the rest is, eh, like, I, I love Sky Moore. I think Sky Moore's great, but John Mechie's pretty good, too. But I think definitely Jahan Dotson, if he's around, is phenomenal at this spot. Now, if you're the Packers, I fought with this, too. I don't think any of these wide receivers are in play, obviously. They just drafted one. My bad. Uh... This is, again, another place where I could see Abiki going. David Ajabo is no longer a first-round guy, I don't think. It'd be really weird to see him go in the first round now. I could still see him sneaking into, like, the la like middle first, middle second round. He's just that good of a prospect that a team will be willing to take a chance on him. Um, but I don't think any of these edge rushers are in play. I think this is where we see Trevor Penning. 20th on their board. He's a lot lower on mine. I'm not actually huge on Trevor Penning, but he's the last of the draftable tackles, at least for a while. None of these other tackles really are going to even be second-round worth guys. So 
take a tackle while you can because it's going to be a long while before one is seen again. I'm not huge on Trevor Penning at all, honestly, but uh, the Chiefs at 29. Now, the sad thing for the Chiefs here is they have back-to-back -back picks, but none of their needs are really reflected in the picks that they do have. Um, I fought with this pick a lot because they could go wide receiver. I think I could realistically see this being Sky Moore. I think Sky Moore is very worthy of a pick here. Um, I could see them going with a guy like Abiki. I think Arnold Abiki is definitely in play here. Uh, this could also be a guy like Khalir Elam. Wouldn't surprise me at all if it was. Um, I think I'm going to have this first pick actually be Khalir Elam out of Florida. I haven't really watched tape on him yet, but I know a lot of teams are very high on Khalir. Um, and... I've fought this second pick between Sky Moore and Arnold Abiki a ton. I have it being Sky Moore. I'm high on Sky Moore. He's a freak of an athlete. I haven't really delved into more than just his highlights. But teams seem to be very, very high on Sky Moore. Um, and I don't know why. He just seems like a Kansas City kind of guy for me. Um, he seems like he'd fit into their system very, very well over there in Kansas City. I know that they just brought back uh, Valdez Scantling and they got Juju. Um, but I think them taking Sky Moore is still huge because neither of those guys are, I mean, Juju's on a two-year deal, but you don't know what you're going to get past that. Uh, so I definitely think that Sky Moore is in play here. At 31 for the Bengals, uh, the biggest issue for them has always been a line for me. Um, you know, actually, I think I'm going to go off course here. I'm going to go off script a little bit. I think personally that this could be Zion Johnson. Very, very much so. Um, but one of the players that I'm very high on that doesn't get nearly enough praise, and I'm going to go, I'm not huge on Zion Johnson, but I am very high on Trey McBride. I could see a situation where Trey, Trey McBride slides into the first round. Trey McBride is phenomenal at what he does. He is one of the better tight ends I've seen in a long time. Um, just from like a size and athleticism standpoint, you could put him... You could line him up at wide receiver if you wanted to. I think he's very good. I think he's worth a first-round grade. He's criminally underrated. Um, and I think the Bengals could definitely use their reinforcement. Although I do think this could be Zion Johnson, and from like a perspective of what teams might do, maybe he should be. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if we hear Trey McBride's name go in the first. Now the Lions... Uh, I mean, I think if you're picking at 32, the sad thing about the Lions is none of their needs are really draftable. Uh, there's no amazing wide receivers left. You're looking pretty lost at linebacker. Uh, the one thing that does kind of concern me, I think they could go with Jaquan Brisker at 32. Um, but I think the Lions are in a decent place to try to take a chance. And I think taking a chance on a guy like Desmond Riddler is something that they could definitely do. Um, teams seem to love Desmond Riddler, and I can see why. Um, again, from a poise perspective, he's great. Uh, he's another one of those guys that's extremely athletic, has a very high ceiling, but you don't really know what you're going to get out of Desmond Riddler. Um, I think he has a higher floor, or a lower floor, but a higher ceiling than Matt Coral. Um, I think Matt Coral's maybe a little bit better right now, but I think Desmond Riddler could be better long term. Uh, even if Matt, Mo Matt Coral is probably more NFL ready, ready day one. That being said, I think Matt Coral could slide into the first round easily. Um, wouldn't surprise me at all if he's taking taken above these guys. There are other guys, like I think Kenneth Walker could spit, could find his way into the first round somehow. Um, again, I think we could definitely hear Zion Johnson go in the first round. Uh, I'm very high on DeMarvin Leal, very high on Perry and Winfrey. Um, who else? McCreary, Roger McCreary is very good. Uh, Jaquan Brisker is probably the best player that's not getting taken then. I like Jaquan Brisker a lot, but I think this is Desmond Riddler. I think the Lions are just in a really good spot to take a chance on a guy. They already got their dude at number two. I think at 32 you can take a chance on a guy that might be, might be your franchise guy, even if it's not for certain. At an absolute minimum, it puts Jared Goff in a situation where there's competition around. You can set Desmond Riddler for multiple years if you wanted to. You can get him ready. It's not really... There's no rush. 
Uh, personally, I don't think that there is a quarterback in this class that should be day one ready at all. I don't. I don't think there's. I don't think any of them will start day one. I, I think you might wait four or five weeks before any of them start, and even then, it'll probably be Kenny Pickett. Um, I don't really think that any of these quarterbacks are year one ready, even to be honest with you. So with all these guys, you have to be able to store them and stash them. Um, anyways, I do think I'm going to be making another one of these sometime soon. Uh, I like them. I like scouting. Um, I need to do more of it, honestly. I've just been absolutely slammed with schoolwork lately, unfortunately. Also, sorry if I sound off. Uh, a little bit sick, kind of losing my voice. Uh, my voice is kind of gravelly, if you couldn't notice, but it's usually pretty gravelly as is. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Peace.